In this Lenten season, we are answering the question, who is Jesus? This passage of scripture from John 15 is a powerful answer to that question. As Jesus is sharing in the final supper he has with his friends who have been with him for three years. And as he is sharing with them uh, some of the most intimate details of what he wants them to be and and what he wants them to continue in terms of this loving of God. Uh, Jesus shares with them the heart and soul of who he is, why he's come, and what it is he's leaving to them. John 13 begins this series of conversation. As it says, Jesus knew the time had come. In answer to the question, who is Jesus? In the time when Jesus knows beyond a shadow of a doubt that his end is near, his love is such for them and for us that he focuses on them. Oh, my friends, no pure example of the love of God in Christ Jesus do we have than this story. And the power and wonder of a love that not only receives the love of God, but powerfully expresses it for the sake of those that He loves the most. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you. But I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Thomas Merton says these words from a book that he wrote in 1967 entitled, No Man is an Island. He says this about love. The gift of love is the gift of the power and capacity to love and, therefore, to give love with full effect is also to receive love. It can only be given perfectly when it is also received. In this month of celebrating black history, We just experienced the power of this kind of love. As we saw just a clip from the final sermon that Martin Luther King Jr. gave in Memphis, Tennessee in 1968. It was just a short portion of about a 45-minute sharing and witness that he gave to a packed house that night in the midst of an ongoing civil rights struggle there in Memphis. And what we were blessed to see and experience was what Merton tries to get at with this statement about love. For not only had King received the love of God, but it was the very love of God that he had received as the gift it was in his life that poured out of him that evening. And the powerful references, prophetic references, that not only identified such loving in in his own life, but certainly in the cause that was God's cause in the United States of America cause of justice that 
king led and was a vehicle, an instrument through which God's loving became known. Well, certainly a powerful illustration of, of what Jesus now in John 15 tries to witness to and share in his last meal with his disciples. And of course, Jesus speaks from his own personal experience of this loving. For Merton goes on to say in another chapter that follows this quote, Love can be kept only by being given away. And that's what we see illustrated, not only in Martin Luther King Jr.'s life, uh, but also in the life of our Lord. To get a sense of the context of what's going on in this passage, I want to turn to sort of where these words of Jesus uh, are shared in a larger ongoing discourse that he's having around table with the disciples on this last Passover feast. And it all begins in John chapter 13 where John has Jesus beginning this time with these words. Before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his time had come to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them fully. He loved them fully. And that is the power of these words. As Jesus identifies later on in the meal after Judas Iscariot has betrayed him face to face as a part of that final meal they shared together, Jesus now begins to unpack his final words to those that he loves to those that he has chosen that will now be, without him present, the expression, the purest expression now of that love in the world. And you see, even the larger context of all of this is that we understand it began with the birth of a baby in Bethlehem. as God's loving finds new expression in this intimate, powerful way in a human being named Jesus Christ. And with that birth, that new beginning is now coming to completion, you see, Jesus is 33, we believe, maybe years old. And now as he gets his chosen together for the final meal, as he's done all that he can do to set up and to express and to be the, the intimate and the faithful expression of this new loving that God is doing in the covenant relationship with God's people. Jesus sort of cliff notes <laughs> in this meal all that is important as he knows as John began the passage that his time has come to leave. So it behooves us, my friends, in this season of Lent as we, we talk about and try to understand the question, who is this Jesus? He is the personification of God's love. He is the revelation of God's love in the world. And Jesus is the one bringing a new understanding of covenant relationship in love with God. 
as this new expression of a new kingdom of God's love is being established. In order to understand the powerful words that Jesus expressed, let's take just a moment to understand the word covenant because this is an ongoing work of covenant. And it all began with Abraham back in Genesis, if you'll remember. And God chose Abraham in Ur of Chaldees. And the story begins, the story of God's loving in the world through covenant, through promise, through fulfillment of promise began there. And God chose covenant. And that's a key word for you and me. If we don't understand and experience this, this love of God. And covenant's not a contract. You know, we know all about contracts, don't we? We've got contracts on our home. As long as we pay the bills, as long as we pay the, the bank, the note, we're good. Contract's great. However, if we defer, if we don't fill our half of that contract, the bank has every right to sue us to come in and to take that which was contracted away from us because we failed. Oh, we all know about contracts. Covenant is much more than a contract. For you see, a, a covenant relationship is where one party covenants with the other to do certain things, period. There is no condition on behalf of the other person. And this, this is the construct and the structure and the place from which God seeks to relate to God's people in covenant. God is saying to Abraham and now again in Jesus as this covenant concept of God's love continues to grow and find new and powerful ways in which to be expressed to you and me as the recipients of covenant love that God is committed and God is not only promising, but God is faithful to what God says God will do in our lives. And Jesus' whole life is based in entrenched in that kind of understanding as Jesus becomes a new and fresh expression of this covenant idea of God's love. And Jesus says it in the text, and I'm going to share that with you in just a minute. You know, I love Scott Peck's definition of love, which is the will to extend oneself for the purpose of nurturing one's own or another's spiritual growth. I love that. It's not about feeling. It's not about emotion. It's about will. It's about choosing. It's about deciding. It's about choice. It's about doing something significant on behalf of someone else for the purpose of their growth. You see, that's the idea of covenant. And we have the salvation history of God. That's what our Bible is. It's the story of that. Where God continues to take the initiative, where God is the chief player, where God is in the great drama, the main character, the author of all of what we behold in terms of what? Covenant loving And now Jesus gathers his disciples and he, he gives them one last word. Can you imagine the intimacy that must have been a part of that experience? Not only for him as he knew it was his last and how much he loved them and how hard it must have been as he realized this would be the last time. Oh, we've all been of experiences like that, haven't we? Sure we have. And in this covenantal loving, Jesus, in the words of Merton, is giving it away. 
as Martin Luther King that night in Memphis gave it away. You see, my friends, a mistake we keep making about loving is we make it about us. <laughs> loving in the sense that we're talking about here, in the work of God, in the covenant understanding of what it means to really love has nothing to do with you or me. And friends, I've got news for us. We need to get this straight in the church today, do we not? Because we're watching that play out every day in a, in a culture that has made it all about us and everything that goes with that. And what selfishness does. And how we get into silos and tribes and it's you against me, us against them. And love in any of its purest sense of what it means is absolutely lost. You see, this is the message. This is the experience that you and I are supposed to have had, that you and I are supposed to be living, that you and I are supposed to be using as the deep, heartfelt soul of who we are, as Jesus so powerfully lives and demonstrates in this passage. It was never about him. And I've got news for us, my friends. If we are to be the disciples and followers of Jesus Christ, it must never be about us. Surely in this time of pandemic, in this time of the past week, are we self-aware enough that we can see through the lies? Are we still connected in any meaningful way to this concept of covenant love to where we know in our heart of hearts that it's not about us, but our lives are expressed? Or have we just put that to the side and we just don't care? as long as our needs get met, as long as the, the power stays on in our home, as long as we've got water. Then we all breathe a sigh of relief. As long as we don't get uh, feared COVID. That's about as selfish as it gets, my friend. Around that table, Jesus talks intimately. Here's what he says. Love is of God. And he begins that. And God has loved me. You see, Jesus has received it from God. And now Jesus, in the fullest meaning of what Merton identified, is now giving it away as Jesus has all his 33 years. And he says to them, remain in the experience and truth of this love. And keep trusting in this loving. Faith is much more than about belief. It's about trusting the love of God. And like God, it so has you that you now will and choose to be a part of the loving for others. As King so powerfully demonstrated and as our Lord Jesus is. And why? Jesus identifies. Why? Why have I done this? Why has God in me done this? And hear the words I, that your joy may be complete. Wow. 
the reason, the whole reason, so you can be joyful, so you can be full of not having to worry, of not being anxious, of not being afraid of life and people and what happens in the future or what's happening now. That you're free from all that because you know you're loved and that's all that matters and you're giving it away. And when you do that, you are joyful. Deep in your soul where it matters. Why has God done this? So you might have joy. <laughs> I can't even comprehend that, can you? By the way, and our loving gratitude stewardship theme for the year. Have you filled out that card yet? In response to this loving? Love, Jesus goes on, has to be shared as I'm sharing and have shared it with you. This commandment I give you, love one another. And the nature of such loving, my friends, is sacrificial. It's to be given away. And you give up your life for others as I'm giving it up for you. You see, Jesus Christ doesn't expect one thing out of you and me that Jesus Christ didn't live and that Jesus Christ in his covenant loving didn't do. Who is Jesus? <laughs> He's a person of integrity that does what he says he'll do because he loves you and me that deeply and that intimately. Regardless of whether we respond or get it, Or do anything about it. Sacrificial. I wonder sometimes in a world and a country with so much if we can even relate to sacrificial anymore. with our storage units full of more stuff than we'll ever need that we don't even use. <laughs> and more distractions in terms of pleasure that we'll ever be able to experience. What's it gonna be this weekend? Uh, you know, the ball game or, I don't know, the movie or how about the opera? <laughs> All great things, don't get me wrong but not at the expense of this. And here's one of the greatest lines Jesus there, such loving puts us into friendship. <laughs> Wrap your head around that one. That we are invited to be friends with the God of the universe in Jesus Christ. You're talking about intimate. Do we know Jesus intimately? Or do we even want him as a friend? He's offering. He's offering it to them to continue, and he's offering it to you and me. Oh, I hope so. I chose you, he says. You didn't choose me. Again, I, uh, I can't comprehend that. Why me? Why you? Because you're his and he loves you. And as you do receive it, just 
do something with it. <laughs> Allow it to have you in a way that it makes a difference in others' lives because that's what was given. Again, Martin Luther King, I can't watch that clip without the hair standing on the back of my head and I've seen it thousands of times. But such is the presence of God's love in people like that, you see? That happened in 1968 and we're still watching it. That says something about the love and staying power of God's love through people, wouldn't you say? Hey, if, and Jesus goes on, if you're having trouble, ask God to help. God's right there, he'll help you. Ask whatever you need. And then the kicker at the end for it all, I give all of this to you because I just want you to love one another. I just want you to love one another. Oh, my friends, in this season of Lent, as we take an honest look, <laughs> one thing is crystal clear in terms of who this Jesus is, is he loves you and me. He's chosen us. He sacrificed for us. And he's done it all. Why? So that we might be joyful. And have meaning and purpose in our lives. And a reason for being here. This week, as you go through your week, I'd like for you to read this passage every day every day and I just want you to sit with the text I don't want you to be self aware enough to just be honest about where are you in relation to these and reminded of Merton's words at the beginning for love to be complete it has to be received and given and shared because if that doesn't happen, then it's not love, certainly not God's love. It's an honor to be your pastor as we continue in this season of Lent. Hear these words and take a little stock of where you are with what they're saying.